And now please welcome Kenneth Richard, Editor-in-Chief of The Impression, who is going to introduce himself, his good friend, Stephen Galloway. <laughs> no? We're getting closer? Mother, can you hear me? All right, I hear a little something. My name is Kenneth Richard. I am the Chief Impressionist of The Impression. And today I have the pleasure of introducing a good friend of mine, Mr. Stephen Galloway, to the stage here in a minute. Let me tell you a little bit about Stephen. Stephen started off 30 years ago as the principal ballerina for the Frankfurt Ballet. And while there, <clears throat> his past first crossed with fashion. Issey Miyake ended up doing the wardrobing and costuming for the ballet house. Stephen ended up liaisoning with Issey as the creative director, and that worked out so well that in the off-season, oh, yeah. Issey asked Stephen to come on board as the creative director of the house of Issey Miyake. So suddenly, oh, fashion oh, had somebody who understood oh, movement and dynamicism and staging, and, and the word got out to the industry that there was this cat out there who had all of these abilities. A little band in England heard about this and said, hey, we need some of that goodness as that special sauce for what we're about to go out and do on a world tour. So their lead singer, Mick Jagger, put a call into Stephen and said, hey, can you come help the Rolling Stones as a creative consultant so that we can go out and make this big bigger? Stephen said yes, and today is still the current creative consultant to Mick Jagger helping the Rolling Stones on their global tours. Fashion came knocking again, this time a little different. Photographers just said, how can we get some of that special sauce into what it is that we're doing? Yeah. How can we get some emotion? How can we get some dynamicism? How can we have build iconic images? And so they retained Stephen as the special formula, and those photographers were people like Jurgen Teller, Nick Knight, Inez and Venud. And suddenly he's doing campaigns for Calvin Klein, Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, and others. Next thing you know, he's doing covers of Vanity Fair, working on the Hollywood issue, helping out Amy Adams, or Adam Driver, or Emma Stone. I'd like to take a look at some of Stephen's particular work and welcome him to the stage afterwards. Bye, nice meeting you, bye, nice meeting you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Galloway. Hello, Web Summit. <laughs> How are you? Oh, are you? Well. How are you? Well. Stephen, welcome. Thank you very much, Kenneth. I'm excited to have you. It's quite a dynamic reel. Thank some, you very some much. Some stuff I left out. I can see a little bit of Tom Ford, some goose exactly. in there. Exactly. Yeah, a little it's bit. A very nice looking piece. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about 
your process like? How, how is it that you prepare to to go to set, and what is it that people sort of require from you? Because you're sort of a new role in our industry. Yes. I mean, I must admit, each time I walk into a studio, I have to be the person who knows nothing and a person who knows everything all at the same time. So each experience, I must admit, I find to be completely new. Sometimes I like to research the designer the subject matter, working together with the art director and the photographer and the stylist. And sometimes I just like to walk in not knowing anything and just basically waiting to see what happens. So, you know, in terms of sort of that dynamicism, you walk into the room, yes. right? And so who are the key players that you sort of synergize with right away? Well, of course, the photographer. Then we have the creative director, the designer, the stylist, <laughs> and last, the model, because the reaction that we want to have, I always want to be super fresh and super exciting. So, you know, I don't always like to meet them sometimes before. So it's like going on to stage with someone that you've never met before, and you have to immediately try to figure out a type of dance. So, yeah. So is the brand involved in there every once in a while, too? Yes. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, when you come in, you know, I think people have a perception of models that may be a little bit different than you and I as yes. we work with them. You know, I think of them as, you know, people my daughter's age. Um, but, you know, are there, what are the common misperceptions about models? That it's a very easy job, that models are stupid and they're just born beautiful, but it's actually quite a bit of work, you know? So, and about that particular work, so when you're there, what is it that, that people are sort of hoping you bring to the equation? I mean, for me, what I try to do most is almost be like a translator of all those people which I actually spoke about earlier. I try to establish a relationship, a physical relationship, almost a physical conversation, I guess you could say. What's interesting about the video that was just shown before, a lot of the, my favorite uh, ads that I've worked on, you almost don't even know that I'm there. You know, it's always just a very slight lean or it's just a little a grace or look to the side or something like that. So it's about establishing a relationship or a vocabulary, a physical vocabulary with the model. I think one of the things that the, the video may show that it's a little disingenuous that we don't sort of have the opportunity to share here today is, is how much still image you do. Exactly, yeah. Right. So, you know, what percentage do you say of your work is, is in the still form versus in the movement form, like film? Well, for me, initially when I first started working um, in fashion, of course, they had a lot to do with like magazines and billboards and all these types of things. But for me, coming from dance, I always saw a photograph in an almost four-dimensional way. Of course, you see the model, she's flat up against here, but for me, I always thought that she was somehow going into a position. So I always have perceived even still photographs in motion. So that's how I still see it today, you know? Where, where does it work really well, and where are sort of some of the hiccups within the framework of what you do? I mean, for me, it's, it's really about being able to capture that magic moment. You know, it's about the breath. It's about the in-between. It's about when you see the model at her, or actor, because I also work with actor, and I've also now recently started working with politicians, which is kind of a very weird thing. You're working with Kate Moss on Thursday, and the next day you're like talking to Angela Merkel, who's standing like this, going like, but what do you think I should do, Stephen? It was something like that. But it's actually quite an interesting dialogue, because you realize how physical people are, have a lot to do about their first reaction to them, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Favorite brands? I cannot say that here <laughs> in front of the world, yeah. you know? <laughs> Can I say the good ones? <laughs> you know, you know? Well, I think, I think really was some of, the, some of the favorite brand moments. Is there like a brand moment that really resonates with you that you, yeah. that you sort of go, oh, you know what, that really helped me Yes. You know, on my, I mean, my journey? I've really enjoyed my work with Tom Ford. I've enjoyed a lot of my work with Gucci of course with Saint Laurent, because these are brands which have such strong identities already, and it's always just very exciting for me to be able to go into those brands and figure out a new way for them to connect with the, the customer. Yeah, so yeah. those are the few of the three. And as you and I have been kind of hanging around the Web Summit, we're, exactly. we're, we're a bunch of tech heads. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. And you and I are you know, not. Yeah, like I, you had to show me how to boomerang. Right? Well, I think it's kind of funny because up until a few years ago, everything which I did was kind of a secret, you know, and now here I am at the Web Summit. So, I mean, yeah, kind of cool, you know. So w one of the things that I thought was kind of funny with regards to this is that people are like, oh, I need an app for that. Right. Right. And, and I, I kind of pause because, you know, again, so much that you do is very specially tailored yeah. to the occasion, well, you know. I mean, I think it's a very nuanced 
job or position because you're dealing with people and their physical strengths, but also their physical imperfections or their physical insecurities. So the idea of trying to blend that into an app or a, a video conferencing type of a situation is, I think it's, it takes the point away because that magic happens on set. And I must admit, guys, it's, it really can be magical moments which happen, you know, when everything all of a sudden just clicks. And often, if the photographer is a good editor, that's the moment you actually see in the campaign, in the video, and all over, all over the world, so. So back a little bit to the app, which is yes. sort of, you know, I think in the app expectation, there's an expectation that you can kind of like, you know, train or do this, or so many people can do this, like any choreographer could do this, but, that, but that's not necessarily what no. you do. No, I mean, initially right? when uh, I kind of first started in this, in this, doing this job, it said Stephen Galloway choreographer because I was for many years the principal dancer with uh, Ballet Frankfurt, and it was kind of like the easiest word for people to um, understand. And then once I was working, I think it was like a Wella Balsam, it was like a hair commercial or something like that. And the photographer was like, yes, we need to have Stephen Galloway on the set. And I remember the client was like, it's a hair commercial, we're shooting shampoo, why does he need to be there? And then I got on set and they kind of understood that it was more about helping the model figure out almost a visual language when she's whipping around her beautiful hair or something like that in slow motion. And so over the summer, I was thinking about it and I said, you know what? I feel like I'm a little bit more of a movement director. And then I put creative movement director to that. And then the next season, we added Stephen Galloway creative movement director. And people were like, oh, of course we need a creative movement director on set. You know, it's called, we need to have one of those. You know? And I must admit, my day rate went up a little bit more. So that was always a good move for myself. Yeah. Well, I think it's also well earned. I think people are starting, the, you know, I notice imagery that has that special extra little bit of something. And yes. I can tell all that there Stephen was there on set. And then I put in a call and of course yeah. you were. Yeah. Um, you know, you and I have both watched the transition from, you know, we've seen a couple transitions. Yes. We've seen some transitions from film to digital right. film, and we've seen a transition from going off and producing things predominantly for a very narrow medium spectrum, yes. media yeah. spectrum. And today, you know, everybody talks about digital as the world of sort of communications hand right. on, the, on your phone. So how has that affected what you do and, and, I mean, and storytelling? I mean, to be perfectly honest, I've always kind of seen my work digitally because motion moving, it's, it's where I come from. It's very much a part of my DNA. So I'm constantly trying to figure out a way, like we were saying earlier, to make even a still image look like it's moving. And I think in a weird way, because we're looking at things on a much smaller platform, you know? And so I sometimes think it takes away because you want to see these large, beautiful images of these women, men, actors, and actresses. So, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a delicate thing. I mean, I enjoy digital because I feel we have the opportunity to reach more people. But, you know, as you'll be speaking about uh, after me, the art of publication is not as, you know, powerful and as vibrant as it used to be. So um, I'm a little bit in between because I like the old, but I also like the new. So I find it to be a very sexy position to be in. So I'm kind of happy with both. So. One of my bigger challenges personally with regards to sort of the digital format is A, the speed. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the fact that everything can be gone in a fleeting moment. Yeah. So I think you add value in that equation yeah. because you bring a little bit more distinction yes. to an instant yeah. that may, you know, resonate more with brand equity and memory. Mm -hmm. But the bigger other challenge that I have is, is not just speed, but it's also, you know, portrait versus landscape. Yes. You know, we're trained in the visual world to be looking at, you know, yeah. almost a television screen. And we also have narrative where two people traditionally come together and, or a love triangle and they all come this guy. And when you put them from suddenly from a landscape yeah. and you flip them into a yeah, portrait. More. So how are art directors and how are brands now working in the portrait world? And how is that? Is that in any impact or? I mean, I must admit, I find a lot of my work now has more to do with actual motion. So, I mean, and with that being the case, we're able to actually play around that problem or the, the, the vert landscape versus the vertical, because we all look at things much more in a vertical way. Um, so, And film must go up, though, for you. Yeah. Right? No, film has been a huge part of uh, the last couple of uh, years of my career. So, And I really love that, because like I said before, I've always seen fashion in motion, even if it was standing still, you know? And time. So yeah. 
time is the other component that I definitely hear everybody talk about sort of being compressed. One, going to market multiple yeah. times and working consistently, yeah. but also, you know, the time to capture just a boatload of assets. Of course. In like yeah. a compress. How, how is that, how have you seen that change? Is well, that of course now, because we receive information and content on so many different levels. It used to be that you would go and you would shoot a campaign and it would just be that a campaign. It might live in a magazine, it might live in the billboard, but that was it. Now you have to shoot the campaign, it's gonna be in the magazine, we're gonna shoot something for the website, then we're gonna take a little bit for the Instagram and then we're gonna have the BTS for all of these things. And so you're just shooting and shooting and shooting and it's a lot of information of basically the same thing because we're getting it all from different places. But I mean, I, I'm kind of okay with that. You know, like I'm used to the, the art of, of motion and the art of performance. So it's a lot of work because in a weird way, we have to shoot more, but with less time. You know what I mean? Jobs that I used to work on that would take maybe five days to do, now they want to have it all have being done in two days. And instead of them wanting 10, Im 10 images, they want to have 44 and they need to have special video for Instagram. They need to have something for the website. So. It's a very interesting dance which is happening right now, but you know, I'm down for the whole thing. I just, I love it, so. I imagine your dance card's more full, right? Yeah. Because of that particular yeah. equation, they need to get the talent in that space quicker yes. because they don't have, you know, the no, three it's, days it's, to make it exactly. happen. Exactly, and it's funny because it used to be in the past, say you would shoot the print campaign and that would be the bulk and then they give you like 10 minutes to shoot the movie. You know what I mean? Now it's the complete opposite. You'll take half a day to get the motion done and then you'll have the rest of it to actually get the print. So it's, it's great. I mean, like I said, I really kind of enjoy the way it's working because it's my world and I'm always very happy to be, you know, a participant in that. So what do you think is next for, for you and your career arc? Because I know you've now recently moved to Los Angeles, which is yes. a whole new film. Yeah. It's the film world. What's I lived in Germany for 35 years, actually, right. and now I'm living in sunny California. So, but it's, so it's pretty good, yeah. yeah nice um, difference. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I must admit, I've been just doing more motion, of course, because um, it's just basically where everything is going, you know, and I just really kind of been enjoying the idea of, you know, of perfecting my eye when it comes to making uh, films and storytelling with a lot of these large luxury brands and heritage brands, you know, it's also some of the small ones too. Yeah. And any um, desire to say direct in the future? Um, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, in a weird way, I've kind of always feel like I've been directing um, by way of suggesting, which I guess is the same as directing, I guess you can say. Um, uh, but I'm moving very slow. I'm very happy at where I'm at. But at the same time, it's also quite interesting to be able to put all of my elements of me working as a dancer, me working as a costume designer, me working as um, a show producer together to somehow also create these experiences for people. Because as we know, you just don't want to go someplace and look at a shoe and say, I like the shoe. Now you want to know about the shoe. You want to know about the company. So it's about these type of immersive, you know, experiential type of uh, events. So that's something that I'm really quite excited about and we're really focusing on right now with me and my team. Right. Yeah. That kind of brings me up to sort of my next question. You know, yes. for, we have a lot of branders in the world. Right? Yeah. Uh, hopefully we have a lot of branders. We have a lot of marketers. We have a lot of people who play a role in the, the storytelling. What type of advice do you, do you have in, in general? You know, it's a very big advice. Question. Advice in general for, advice you in know. General. Well, what you've seen work and what doesn't work. I mean, I often refer back to telling stories. It's been funny because walking around here the last couple of days, you hear that so often, how important it is to tell stories because people still want to connect, you know, um, as much as certain people try to drive us apart, that's the most important thing. That's been also a really incredible thing being at the summit is you feel that there's a group of people, everyone here wants to learn, wants to figure out ways to get closer, wants to figure out ways in which we can communicate better. And it's amazing for me as a dancer, because as a dancer, that's all we do. It's all about feeling. It's all about movement. It's all about touch. And so, I mean, that's the, it's about storytelling. I mean, as cliche as that might sound, that's the thing which I find is going to make you um, either more desire towards the brand, more desire to understand more about what you're purchasing, giving, and exchanging. So storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, that's Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Goodbye, uh, Web Summit. <laughs> Thank you.
walk off sideways now, right? You know? <laughs>